Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us this morning for our golf prevention seminar. Um, today we have with us Beth Moses. She's the ECMC trauma nurse, and she's been part of the coalition for oh my gosh, over I would say 10 or 15 years that she's been presenting with us today. So um, I hope you enjoy your presentation. Okay, yep, I'm just bringing up my PowerPoint. Okay, perfect. All right, can you see it? Um, no. Hang on one second. Let okay. me hit share screen again. Oh, dear. That's okay. How's that? Oh, beautiful. Yep. Okay, perfect. All right. Well, hello, everybody. I'm Beth Moses. I am the Trauma Injury Prevention and Education Coordinator for ECMC. In a nutshell, I'm a nurse. Um, I've worked with trauma patients oh, close to 30 years. And um, the number one reason for ECMC having trauma patients is falls. So that's kind of why I'm here talking to everybody today. So let's jump right into this. Oh. Got to use the mouse to advance the screen. Hmm. I am going to switch screens just because it will not advance the screen from the other screen. Hang on one second, Julie. Oh dear. Oh, there it goes. It advanced by itself. Don't know how it did that. <laughs> Okay, so our goal today is we want people to understand and recognize that most falls can be prevented. And I know a lot of people don't necessarily believe that, but it's true. Um, and we're going to show you some simple steps and how you can reduce your risk of falling. So a little background and a little statistics. One in every three people over the age of 65 fall every year. That's actually a pretty high number. And honestly, we think it's higher than that. A lot of people don't tell anybody they fall. Um, and maybe you're guilty of that yourself. Um, do you fall and not share that with your physician or not share that with your family members? Um, so those are underreported, these numbers. But it is at least a $2.3 billion problem that we have every year. That's just in the hospital charges alone. The average cost of a fall, hospital visit wise, is about $40,000. And that fall is typically one in which somebody falls, breaks a hip, needs a hip replacement, and they're discharged in about four or five days at the most. That's about $40,000. On top of that, you have to add your rehab um, and physical therapy and all those other costs that come after the fact, your follow-up visits and things like that. Falls in older adults are the leading cause of deaths due to an injury. They are the number one reason for hospital admissions, and they are the number one reason why people go to the emergency room. So some data from Western New York, and I know this is from 2014, but the state, honestly, it takes them six years before they give us fresh data. So this is the most recent data out of New York State. But when you look at the eight counties of Western New York and you take into consideration every single hospital, you know, St. Joe's, Millard Suburban, uh, South Buffalo Mercy, all of those hospitals, they have to report their injury data. And out of all of their patients in the emergency room, 72% of the injured patients are injured because of falls. 
so it's actually a much bigger problem than just my trauma center. My trauma center is 45% of our trauma patients are fall related. Of these patients, 66% are women, the median age is 77, and the most frequent injury is a hip fracture. But stop and think for a little bit, what other injuries do you think are the most common following a hip fracture? Quite often it is the upper arm up here, the humerus, or the shoulder area. Um, because as we age, we're not as fast as we used to used to be. And to save our face, we kind of fall and take it in the shoulder and you break the arm. Um, neck fractures are actually very common. Um, with osteoporosis, the bones in our neck weaken and you can easily have a fracture in your neck. Um, broken ankle, broken leg, wrists, for those that are able to get their hands out in front of them quick enough, um, broken wrists are another big problem. So of all the people that are admitted, and then they go and get discharged, the most frequent place of discharge is to a skilled nursing facility. Typically due to rehab, um, we consider that a skilled nursing facility, but it's also um, some people are there forever and they don't go home from there. That's 95% of the discharges, this is prior to COVID, went to skilled nursing facilities. Now, actually, we send more people home and try to get them in-home rehab. So, do you have a fear of falling? Let's be honest with ourselves. A lot of people are afraid to fall. And just that simple fear of falling is enough to kind of set off a chain reaction of events. If you're afraid of falling, you tend to be less active. So maybe you'll sit at home, watch the soaps on TV or the game shows or things like that. You tend to be more inactive. Or it could be something as simple as, oh, they got pretty steep steps at church. I'm not going to church anymore. Or it's icy and I'm not going to go outside for the winter. But that increase in inactivity actually weakens your muscles. The weakening of the muscles will actually then increase your risk of falling, and then you fall again. So it's a perpetual cycle that we have to break somewhere. So you need to keep up your activity. You need to keep up exercise in order to truly reduce the risk of falling and get over your fears. So one of the things that we use to address fear of falling is a matter of balance classes. And Erie County Senior Services is one of the providers of those classes, and I know they do them at a lot of the senior centers. But that class itself just focuses on the fear of falling and throws in some exercise and some other components to help people reduce their risk. So what might your fears be? For some people, it is the fear of falling and nobody else is there to help you, um, being alone unable to reach the phone. Um, for other people, it's the fear of going to the hospital. They have that, you know, mindset, if I go to the hospital, I may never come home. Or they're afraid that they'll be put in a nursing home or they'll have to put their house up for sale, things like that. But falls are not a normal part of aging and are largely preventable. So what are some of the reasons that people fall? It's not just an activity. It could be vision problems. It could be balance and vestibular, that inner ear issue. It could be reactions to medications, unsafe environments, which I'm gonna get into in a little bit, weakened muscles, migraine headaches, previous head injuries or concussions, um, ear infections, Second most popular reason for people falling. Meniere's disease, um, dizziness caused by your neck or your cervical spine, acoustic neuromas, um, and loss of hearing due to antibiotics. There are some antibiotics that are pretty potent in, and quite often when infants or young people get them, it will cause hearing loss, and that could be part of the reason people fall. 
So what are some things that you could do to prevent falls? One, begin an exercise program. Not always the most popular choice, but honestly, there's a lot of other side benefits of beginning an exercise program. One, it improves your memory. People that exercise on a regular basis have been shown to have better memories and longer sustained good memory. Um, exercise will also reduce your risk of heart disease. It calms your mind, it improves your breathing, and it also improves your balance. Um, exercise has been known to give you a mood boost. It's actually one of the things that we prescribe for people, and it's part of the program in our psychiatric department. Um, people with mental health issues and depression and things like that, they have to exercise every day because you re release those endorphins when you exercise and it improves your mood and your outlook. You're less likely to get diabetes. You're less likely to have a stroke. Um, exercise will help lower your cholesterol and it relieves arthritis pain. And a lot of people think just the opposite. Oh, I have arthritis, I'm not gonna exercise, my knees are bad. But actually, slow, simple, smooth exercises Tai Chi for arthritis is a great example, has been shown to actually reduce arthritis pain. And people have put off their hip replacements and their knee replacements for quite a long time because they've started an exercise program. And then they've been able to avoid that surgery. Exercise will also help build up your bone density. So if you do fall, you're less likely to actually break something. Second thing you can do to reduce your risk of falls is get an annual eye exam. Our eyes change all the time. I know I'm on a trend of getting new glasses every single year. Um, but if you look at the screen here, the picture of the trees, people with glaucoma get that tunnel vision and it gets dark around the periphery and you don't see things coming from the side or it makes it more difficult to drive at night, things like that. So you gotta keep up on your eye exams to try to mitigate the loss of your vision. Um, the picture of the children is an example of glaucoma. I'm, not, I'm sorry, cataracts rather. Um, cataracts are a slow developing cloudiness of your vision. And some people don't actually realize how bad their cataracts are until they get the cataract removed. And then they're like, wow, what a difference that is. So annual live um, exams are important. The third thing that you can do is review your medications with a pharmacist or your physician. We call it the brown bag review. Put everything that you take. If you take vitamins and herbs, throw them in the bag. Put all your prescriptions in the bag. Doesn't matter what pharmacy they came from. Any over-the-counter medicines like Tylenol or Motrin or um, something for sleep or whatever, throw it in the bag and take it to your pharmacist and ask them to go through it. They will actually be able to pinpoint for you which things don't mix well, certain combinations of medications, and sometimes it's herbs and vitamin related, things like that, will actually increase your risk of falling. So you want to avoid those interactions with your medications. And the final component to reduce your risk is a home safety assessment. Um, we have checklists and if you're interested, we can send out checklists to you if you would like some, but you can find them online if you're internet savvy. Um, look for fall prevention home safety assessments. But these are little checklists that go through every room in your house and kind of pinpoint the things that we kind of get used to and we kind of overlook on our, you know, in our daily lives, but they are things that will result in an increased risk in falls. So let's kind of go through some of them. So take a look at this room. Typical living room, older home, got the big old radiator in the corner. But what are some of the things here that make it a risk for people to fall? And I can tell you, it's more than just the shoes on the floor, or the newspapers you see on the floor, all right? What if you're sitting in the big wing chair on the, the, 
on the, up against the wall. I'm a person who likes to kind of hook my feet underneath the chair. When I go to move my feet and stand up, I have a good chance of catching my feet on the cords that are underneath that chair. So that's a risk. The cane as well is obviously in the way. What about throw rugs? How many of you have throw rugs in your house? Um, I know a ton of people do. I am a volunteer EMS provider in my town. I go to a lot of houses. I see, honestly, I have seen throw rugs stacked three high. They change them with the seasons and they just stick another one on top. And eventually you've got a one inch to two inch lip to get out for that rug. As we get weakened and less active, we tend to not pick up our feet as well as we used to, and we easily catch those rugs. Also, throw rugs tend to curl the corners. If you absolutely have to have a throw rug, please let it be one rug and tape down the edges to reduce your risk of catching your foot on that rug and causing you to trip and fall. Some other things in this picture. What if you wanted to sit on the sofa? You should never ever have to walk around or scoot around furniture to get to your destination. So keep that in mind for how you place the furniture in your house. To get to the sofa in this picture, you kind of have to sidestep and shimmy all the way around that coffee table. And that's difficult for a lot of people. They're likely to trip on the legs of the coffee table and down they go. And the final big thing I notice are the tables that are in this room. Two tables in particular, the one in the, um, the brown one in the bottom left corner, and then the, the TV tray that's got a lamp on it. And I know many people who go to their light switches, for example, and they lean on the table to reach up underneath to get their light switch. That is not enough to support your weight. Neither one of those tables are enough to support your weight. And you're likely to topple over the table and end up on the ground. So let's look at a different room. Lots of different problems in this room. Some of them are, are fire hazards, honestly, but there's a lot of different fall problems here. Some of the ones are repeated from the last picture, like our throw rugs, for example. And you can see here, they're curled up on the corners, they're not straight, they're a trip hazard. But let's focus on the area of the stairs. So what are the problems there? There's actually at least three problems in that section of the picture. One, clutter on the stairs. The stairs shouldn't be your landing place. Not your place to, oh, I'll just put it here and I'll take it up later. Because if you need to go up or down the stairs in a hurry, it's a spot that people can trip. What about the woman that's walking down the stairs? What's the problem there? What is she wearing on her feet? Those slippers, the flip-flop or slide-in style, are the worst possible thing that you can use. Um, as people go down the stairs, they fall off their feet, and they result in people falling down the stairs. Very high rate of falls with people wearing slip-on shoes. What type of shoes should you wear or slippers should you wear? You want something that's got somewhat of a, a good grippy surface, you know, a good sole. But the main feature you want is something that encompasses the back of your heel. So you want it more sneaker style, so to speak, or loafer style, where the shoe goes all the way around your foot to reduce the risk of it flopping off as you're going up or down the stairs. And the final problem over by the stairs, there's no handrail. And ideally, you should have two handrails, if at all possible, one on each side. Because what if you do injure your arm and now you got to go up the stairs kind of on the other side because you can't use your one arm. Or maybe you're carrying a bag of groceries, whatever. You should have the ability to grab the rail on each side. And make sure your handrails are snug to the wall. 
And ideally, you want your handrail to be something that you can grip. So your hand should be able to go around it. If you have something, um, some handrails are more like a flat board and you just kind of can hook your fingers onto it, it's not gonna support your body weight very well if you're just gripping by your fingers. So you want something that you can actually grip your hand around, ideally. So what are some other problems in this room? Obviously, yeah, there's cobwebs in the medicine chest, which is a bad thing, but fall-related issues. Take a look at the cords on the floor. Take a look at the position of the telephone, maybe. Don't get up and run across the room to answer the phone. The ideal position for the telephone is closest to where you sit. If you have a, the ability to do a wireless phone um, that you can slip in your pocket, um, that's the best option because it's always close by. Um, you don't want to have to go running for the phone on the other side of the room. Um, it's only a solicitor anyway, not worth answering. Light switches, lamps, also they're on the other side of the room. If when you sit down, you don't need the lights, and then it starts to get dark, now you've got to go across, trip over the rug, trip over the cores to get to the lamp. Try to put the lighting closer to where you are. Makes the visibility and the access much easier. Also be careful with your pets. We see the cat is playing with the electrical cords, but not so much as the cat's playing with the cords. Cats and dogs will get under your feet. I Honestly, swear to God, I have had patients in the ICU because they tripped over their dog. Um, I actually had a husband and wife couple together in the ICU. Um, the husband tripped over the dog and the wife tried to catch him and they both ended up in intensive care. So always be mindful of where your pets are. Now this looks like a beautiful room, right? What problems could we have here? but there's actually a few. Um, let's start over by the shower in the tub. I know we can't see it visually in the picture, but what's the surface on the bottom of the, the tub? You want an anti-slip surface. They have stickers that you can buy, little strips that you can buy that you can adhere to the bottom of the tub to make it an anti-slip surface. Nobody wants to be slipping and falling in the bathtub. Um, Secondly, where are the handrails? Do not use the towel rack as a handrail or a grab bar. Towel racks do not have to be drilled into the studs of the wall, and they will fall out of the wall if it tries to support your body weight. So please, please, please do not use the towel bar as a grab bar. You should have towel bars at the outside edge of the tub where you need to step over the wall. You also need it on the inside wall of the tub so that you can get up from a seated position as well as have something to steady you when you're standing. All right, what about the other side of the room? The big problem I see is the position of the toilet paper. And a lot of people think, oh, no big deal. What's the problem with that? But I can't tell you how many times I've been to somebody's house because they've fallen off the toilet and they're stuck between the toilet and the tub. You should never, ever have to spin around to get your toilet paper. Move it to the sidewall or put it on a little stand so that it is more to the side or in front of you so you don't have to turn around. Um, the grab bars would be also a good idea if you need them at the toilet area as well. The sink, that looks pretty good. The throw rug, eh, get rid of it. But also think of what kind of sink you have at home. I want to caution people about the sinks that are without a cabinet underneath them. Um, I once went to the home of a woman who fell in the bathroom, and she used to come into the bathroom and she would hold on every surface as she made her way to the toilet. So she would lean on the sink 
et cetera. Well, she had the sink that had one pole that held up the porcelain sink as it was stuck to the back of the wall. And she was 90 pounds soaking wet, but she knocked the entire sink off the wall and broke it into a million pieces on the floor. So have a secure sink and don't lean on it. The kitchen, just a couple of things here. We've already talked about the throw rugs. We've already talked about the um, the pets that are underfoot. But the big problem here is she's climbing on a step stool, or actually more like a bar stool, a little bar stool, to reach things in the upper cupboard. We actually recommend that you take all your items in the cabinet, rearrange your cabinets. Everything should be between your eyes and your knees to avoid the need to climb up on something to get something out of your cabinet. You should never be climbing on furniture to get anything. If you have to get something, the step stool that we recommend is the foldable step stool that has a large arched handle up above it so that you can hold the handle up here as you climb up the steps. Um, that's really it in that picture. There's some fire safety things like your pot handles and such, but the final picture is the entryway. So there's a couple problems here, um, but easily fixable problems as well. So we have clutter. The newspapers and the mail is stacked next to the door because there's a mail slot on the door falling to the floor. <clears throat> So that means somebody's got to bend over and pick it up. It's a trip hazard, it's a slip hazard. Have something to collect your mail if you have a drop slot. The second problem are the boots, okay? I know most of us keep our shoes and our boots at the door, but my bigger question is, how do they take the boots off? I frequently see people kind of lean up against the wall balance on one foot and try to pull off their boots. This is an ideal place to have a bench or a chair so that you can sit down safely and pull off your boots and shoes. Just a simple fix. Um, final problem I see in this little area is the position of the light switch. It's a wall sconce up on the wall and the switch is right by that number four. You shouldn't be leaning and reaching over stuff to get to your light switch. Have a different type of light switch installed so that you can access it more easily. This is also a great place to consider using grab bars. How many people have you seen who taking that step out the front door are trying to hold onto the frame of the door? Very difficult to grip the frame of the door. But that's a great place to put a grab bar. Put a bar there so you have something to hang on to as you take that step outside and into outside your door. Any questions? Julie, I've lost my chat box, so if you oh, is it, okay, well um we have one that says well it's kind of a comment and it says never thought to take down the edges of the pro rug before. Thank you for that idea. So awesome. I, yeah, that was great. So if anybody has any questions, you can unmute yourself or you can chat it um, on the bottom right of your screen. There's a little bubble that says chat on it. And then at the very bottom, um, another screen will pop up. And then at the bottom of that, you can enter your message there. So if anybody has any questions for Beth, you can go ahead and type them in. Yeah. Oh, can you see it? Okay. We'll give people a minute just in case. <laughs> oh, I get you know. Oh, here we go. Oh, the suction grab bars. Are the suction grab bars any good? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, they give people a false sense of security. The big problem with the suction cup grab bars is the fact that they fail. 
quite honestly, they fail a lot. Um, I've seen people try to put them on the, you know, the flat surface, the edge of their tub, and it doesn't seal quite correctly, and it, it breaks the suction. Or they put it on their, their walls, and it catches the edge of the grout line of their tile, and that makes it fall off the wall. But in, in addition to that, if you were to look at the packaging with a magnifying glass, of course, um, in the very teeniest of tiniest print, it states, warning, this device is not intended to hold your body weight. So it just goes to show you that it's a gives people a, a sense of security, but it's a false sense of security because the device is not designed to hold your body weight. If you actually slipped and fell and had your hand on that, the chances are extremely high that it will break off the wall. That was super helpful. We have a another nice comment. Great presentation. Picked up a couple of good tips. Awesome. Yeah, that's wonderful. Somebody else want to ask anything um, of Beth before she takes off? Maybe You're quite time. welcome. <laughs> All right. Well, like I said, if, if anybody wants a checklist to go through your house. And what I really recommend is you give that checklist to somebody else to go through your house because we tend to cheat. Um, you know, oh, I know that handrail is loose and I'll just be careful. But in the heat of the moment when you need it, you're going to be in trouble. So give the, give the checklist to somebody else. Give it to one of your kids or give it to a neighbor. Do each other's house and kind of go through it. And you'd be surprised at how many simple fixes you can make that'll keep you living in your house longer. Beth, where do they where do they get the checklist? Like, where what's the contact information on that? Um, you can actually, I'll give you my phone number if you want. You can call me, and I will I will drop some in the mail to you. Um, or if there's a way of reaching you, and you can let me know. Either way, it doesn't okay. matter. But my phone number is 898-5184, 898-5184. If you call ECMC, you get kind of like the automated operator, ask for Beth Moses, and you'll be put right to my phone. Wonderful. Okay, yeah, and then also, um, if you have to use Beth's number, you can always contact myself and I can get in contact with Beth and she can get out to you for sure. All right, um, if we don't have any other questions, um, I just want to take the time to say thank you, Beth, for coming out with us today and sharing all that wonderful information. We really, oh, you're welcome. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Um, and then just thank you and have a wonderful day. All right, you too. Okay, take care. Bye, everybody. Okay, so now we're going to um, we're going to go ahead and play the tip of the day by um, from the Green Room Show and Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Just give me one minute here. I'm going to pull it up.
Okay. Another great tip from Doreen from Blue Cross and Blue Shield, and we'll move on to Richard's video. Um, his little exercise video, I believe today is six minutes. Six minutes and 19 seconds.
Okay, everyone, that is the end of the seminar today. Thank you so much for joining us, and I hope everybody uh, has a wonderful rest of the day, and um, hope to see you tomorrow. Tomorrow, our presenter will be Richard himself, so um, I'm looking forward to that, as I'm sure you are as well. So thanks again, and we'll see you tomorrow. Take care.